Welcome back to PJ Chain Design. Today we are going to use a Rhino 7 new tool to make the very smooth and rounded surface like the one on the right. Are you ready? Let's get started. We're going to starting with the zero for a circle. That's the ring size. Um, I'm going to set it up for 16 millimeter. And then I'm gonna come in over here to the top to do my design. First things I wanted to do is draw a heart shape. Let me hide in this one and do a heart shape by using the curve. You can draw any of the heart shape you like any using any kind of the tool. I basically just simply want to draw something like this. Going to use a smooth command and kind of using the bar to slice to make them a little bit rounder, smoother in this way and click OK. All right, and the next things I wanted to do is to mirror to the other side using the center as zero, holding my shift, and we are going to uh, trim each other for the extra there. Now, looking at this, I always try to avoid the sharp angle like this. So let's go ahead to use the fillet. In this case, I'm going to use, uh, let's try 0.3 millimeter and see how it goes. And if it is too small, maybe 0.4 millimeter in this case, all right, and don't forget to join everybody. Now we have this, we are going to creating the profile for it. Coming to my right view, I'm going to use the conic corner and um, snapping into any of the point and bringing something like this. Then I want to rebuild this curve into the degree three and click OK. Now you can ch you can do the profile for uh, whichever shape you like, but I would like to do is changing the button to make the button a little bit wider. So when I'm um, doing duplicate of them and they can touch on the button, so that way it will have a better casting. All right, so that's one. Let's take a look on if we sweep one, what's going to happen. If I do sweep one and we are going to sweep one rail and um, doing something like that, it might be OK, but take a look on this. You're going to have the shape intersect itself and that is going to cause the problem for the printing. So instead of using the sweep one, what I like to do is making a thickness on this one by using the offset curve. And I want to offset maybe 0.8 millimeter right there on the top. And this piece is right somewhere in the middle there. Okay. Um, and then the rail, the cross section doesn't have to touch the rail. And double make sure that we have this sharp point over there. So I want to use the fillet to fillet this one again. Make sure everywhere is nice and rounded. Then we are going to use a sweep two instead. Rail one, rail two, cross section. And then we will have a better shape there. Again, I would like to have a button that's a little bit wider. So I'm going to turn on record history and use a sweep to one more time. Rail one, rail two, cross section. And uh, look at the button that's a little bit bumpy there. So I want to make sure I maintain the high so it's not as bumpy and then click OK. Now, if I feel like this is uh, too narrow, too fat or too skinny, I can always uh, using my curve, make them wider, select the button make them wider or something like that to change the shape of that. Okay, so let's take a look on this one. I also feel like this knee a little bit thicker just because we are going to cut the bottom for inside for ring chain to make it rounded. So we want to make sure that this is thicker and have enough thickness. So let's bring up our ring. Okay, so let's bring this up there Apparently this is a little bit too fat. Let's come over here and I would like to rotate this 90 degree and align to the horizontal center. And then depends on how thick you want. Maybe I want a little bit thicker. I want to make sure that inside of a ring chain will be cut nicely over there. All right. So let's give it a try. Um, we are going to do polar array. So array polar. And I'm going to try maybe 12 of them and see what happens. Center is zero. Hit enter. And I want 12 of them. And uh, for 360 degree, and as you can see, it's not touching. So we want to increase for 14 and take a look. 
and it's barely touching there and it's not good for the casting so we want to do 16 over there okay so now it's nice and touching overlapping and where overlapping area is it's uh, good for me to cut it later on then I'm going to click enter all right then this is our shape there don't forget to record a history just in case we need to change anything and let's click enter and that's our shape there now if you get it a little bit lower and everything will follow it it's because we have a history recorded okay so is that work for you let's go ahead to select everybody and use a bowling union it breaks the history but now it become one piece we also want to click on our ring size and let's go ahead to extrude it into the solid make sure both both sides equal yes and let's do the boolean difference this guy out of this guy so if you like the shape like this take a look uh, render view and that would be fine but i do like to have them a little bit puffier nice and rounder so to avoid a lot of casting issue on those sharp corner so one thing that you can do with the rhino 7 is rhino 7 has this quad mesh and then you click on the object you want to quad mesh and you will have something like this as uh, stay with the talk uh, preset for 2000 on the target call count and let's see the preview as you can see the preview it still seems really sharp to me for those line there all right so we can hide the input to get something like this all right you can see it is already smoother but um it seems to deform and have some angular shape there as well so that's try to keep it close to the original all right so this is what happened if i changing the adaptive size percentage so the higher number more close to the original one and then you can increase the size even more if you want to but i'm going to stay it here and then just gonna pick it up to the side for comparison all right if we look at the render view it's not much of a difference because we need to do additional things that's using the smooth command and we want to smooth this guy you can make it super smooth but you might also change in the inside um, ring surface so just need to watch out do a couple of the test and then you will get something a little bit smooth like this okay so that's one way to do it i'm going to move it on the side and do another uh, comparison now we're going to use the same command uh, quad remesh here and then we're going to stay the same setting that we have and then we can uh, convert it to sub d this time and we want to preview it to see what happened all right so now you're turning into the sub d uh, object and we're gonna hide in the input as you can see it is going uh, smooth as well and this is the quicker way uh, either doing the sub D or doing the uh, quad mesh to make it smoother we can also do is reduce this number back to 50 and also reduce the quad count into half for 1000 all right as you can see the lower faces give you rounder shape um let's try if we go even lower to 500 all right as you can see now we have a really uh rounder shape but it's kind of deformed a lot i don't like it so i might just go back with a thousand or somewhere in between maybe 850 okay so you kind of need to play with this let's click ok and let's bring up this shape out there so this is a sub d ring over there all you need to do before you printing just convert the object into the nerf and they are ready to print i hope you enjoyed the video i have a lot more trick and tips to show you in the membership program hope to see you there thank you for watching see you next